Yo, my peoples, what's up? Jason here with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'd like to welcome you today to a playthrough of Everdell. Everdell, the base game is what you see represented on this big board over here. Down here, I have the Spirecrest expansion, which was specifically requested by our Patreon backers. Thank you very, very much for that. And also, I have module elements from the Belfair expansion, which I will be uh, moving into and showing you as I move through the playthrough. So this was requested by our Patreon backers. If you like what we do, if you like the One Stop Co-op Shop, the YouTube channel, the podcast, the community we have over on Discord, the different tiers of conversation that we have, please consider a contribution ongoing, one time, whatever you think uh, you makes it worth it for you in terms of the content, in terms of uh, helping us get the video going, uh, get the games coming in and bringing fresh, hot content out there for you. And this one's fresh and hot in the sense that the expansion, the latest two expansions uh, for this game, Everdell, are now live as I record this and post this on Kickstarter. In addition, there are three expansions and then they're adding two more. There'll be a big box that will be releasing to contain all of your Everdell. So please enjoy this playthrough, and I hope that it helps you make an informed decision as to whether you want to back the Kickstarter or not. So let's go through a quick rules explanation, especially for the expansion content, and then get to a playthrough of Everdell. So here I have laid out the two expansion modules that I'm going to be using this playthrough. This is for Spirecrest, and these are the modular uh, additions which the Belfair expansion brings. I'm not going to go through the basic Everdell game. As I said in the overview, there's a lot of Everdell out there already. <laughs> go ahead and check it out, including on the One Stop Co-op Shop. Let me walk you through the main feature over here, which is Spirecrest. So in Spirecrest, the two characters are uh, my myself, which is uh, white, and the opponent, which is black. I believe they're the mice and the rats that you're going to be seeing. So then I am going to take their ambassadors, which are the rabbit meeples over here and they're going to be walking along the path so the path continues along here and every time i reach one of these stones it's going to represent the prepare for season so right now i'm in winter and then i'm going to when i prepare for season and turn it to spring i'm going to go here fall and then uh or summer and then fall and then kind of proceed that way every time i go through one of the prepare for seasons actions i get to choose one of these two uh, markers over there and that's going to represent my progress uh, in terms of completing a journey from the, the whole year so then towards the end of the game and I'll get to that in a second but it's going to ask me to spend a couple of other resources to get those points that's at the end of the game I'll show you that in just a second the other parts of the expansion are that there are global effects that are now in play. So I have four cards laid out and I have a, another set of uh, sample cards over here. They're all bad. <laughs> Just to kind of preview one of them. This is from the autumn. Immediately place one of your workers here immediately permanently. They're uh, handling the wildfire or something. So it's always going to get in your way. There's never good weather. <laughs> There's always bad weather. I'm not exactly what's going on in Everdell that there's so much bad weather, but what are you going to do? So then I'm going to proceed and I'm going to uh, give that to myself and I'm going to give that to the opponent. They're going to score automatically because the, the bot is a jerk face. And then once I get to the prepare for season, I'm going to be pulling from the relevant deck over here. This is prepare for spring, prepare for summer, and prepare for fall. So then when I get here, I'm going to be pulling three of these cards. I'm going to lay them out right on the bottom of the board. Let me just get that out of the way over here. And I get to purchase one of these three upgrade items. So then uh, if I purchase this on the beginning track, it's for nothing. But if I purchase the one on the end over here, it is I have to discard either two cards or two resources. So then they're all pretty cool. These are usually kind of extra spaces, extra power. So I can put a worker here, get this power. And, uh, or this would uh, give me uh, some more points. That's the spring. The summer tends to be some critters. And I'll show you the critters as I get through the playthrough. And that's some other powers. And fall, since that's reaching the end game, it's mostly points. The reason I wouldn't just take this one every single time in solo is because if I get this one, it will get more points. The bot will get more points. But if I take this one, I'll get the resources. 
but I only give it a, a very few points. So I think three points to the bot if I take the free one, only one point if I take, if I spend some resources. So let's say I've completed the entire journey. I've traveled along the path and now I'm at the end game. I've collected for myself, here I am, uh, this path, uh, these three tokens, and the bot has collected these, uh, which were the leftover token to just get it automatically. The bot just gets it. <laughs> so as you could see, two, three, two, doesn't have to discard anything. We we'll just get the seven points. Uh, so I want to tra travel as, as far as possible here to keep up with what the bot's doing. So then I would travel here. I would discard these two resources. This is any resource. I travel over here, card and resource, boom, done. And then over here, card and bury. So then if I can complete it, I get my six points, away we go. And there are some that are, are worth a little bit more. I just happen to pick a couple of low value ones. Let's say I could not do this, then I'm stuck. So even if I could do this last one, but I don't have the resources for this one, I'm stuck and I am no longer able to finish the journey. So I wanna be able to complete as much of this journey as possible to get the maximum points. And that is Spirecrest. So these are the elements of the Belfair expansion and there's actually the lion's share of the expansion that you see. So the rule book says to just play Spirecrest on its own, but I think these are easy. I'll mix them in just for the benefit of the audience. We're gonna go for it. <laughs> All right, uh, so the first thing that the expansion gives you are, are extra um, special events and extra forest locations. So forest location kind of messes up the meta a little bit, gives you some something different. So I like a card like this, activate two of your production. You, your production doesn't activate a lot to having this, you know, just kind of gives you an extra chance to activate that again. We're playing with that. These are extra special events in the common, in a regular game, you'd have to like get certain creatures and build towards that in the longer term. Here, they're really easy. So then you get five common constructions, you get some points. And it's nice to be able to have a simple option for that. I have to watch for this in a, in a basic game because, or at least in a solo game, if I don't, whatever I don't get um, from the board, uh, special event wise, the creature gets or the bot. So uh, having just five points sitting there, I want to you know, want to make sure that, because it's really easy for the bot to get that. So if I want to get that, uh, the common constructions, I need to kind of rush this. So just adds a little bit of a wrinkle. Doesn't make these too much more complicated. Here is perhaps the most entertaining of the uh, Belfair expansion pieces, which are the player powers. So there's a lot of pieces, you know, the frogs and the lizards and otters and all that. So. I'm going to play the mice, so I'm going to take their special power. So then it gives me a special power. After you visit a basic or forest location, I can gain a resource that I don't already have, kind of a forager type uh, efficient gatherer. So I'm going to play with that. The balancing mechanism is that when you prepare for season for spring, you don't get that extra worker. So you d you're down a worker, but your workers are more powerful, which is really, really cool. I'm going to play with that too. This is the Garland Festival. So you know, you just kind of shuffle these in and you just pick one and go. And, you know, so if you have the most uh, governance at the end of the game, first place gets six, second place gets three. So this is another one where it's like, you know, I just shuffle it in, do it. And I have to just, another thing to keep in mind for the bot. And again, I've played enough Everdell where I can do that. It, I, it might be a little bit much for if you're just beginning your journey, but, you know, it's just a nice little wrinkle to add in there. I'm going to shuffle these and then add one to my game. And finally, the market. So... If you've seen the Belfair advertisements, you're gonna have seen this big board over here, which goes above the main Everdell board. And it has this little separate space to follow festival. I'm not gonna play with that, that's boring. Just, you know, it's another um, basic event to get. I do wanna play with the market though. So this is a space that the, uh, they, they give you this little version of it. So I'm gonna play with that. So here's a space where your worker can go and you can do one of two things, gain or trade. So let's say I want to gain, I pick something, I pick the sticks. Okay, I'm gonna get some wood and a card and then I move it down to the trade area. When I go here in a future turn, I can choose to trade. So let's say I, I runneth over with sticks. Uh, I get to trade that in and I get to get three points and two random resources. Excellent for a long-term thinking, long-term play. So I like playing with this. Uh, again, not too powerful, just kind of like trading things for things. And you have to use a worker to get it, so you're, you're losing that opportunity elsewhere. But I think it's a pretty cool little mechanism. So I'm going to wrap it all up, Spirecrest and Belfair. Here we go.
You might have also seen these player boards. There's six of them. They're useless. <laughs> it's a place to hold your resources. And then you kind of build out your city from here. But they, they had a useless cardboard just to fill out the box. All right, looks like we are ready for our playthrough of Everdell. So I've rearranged things just for the sake of filming and being able to get close-ups and getting everything in. This is the main area where we're gonna spend most of our time. The market, that modular market, I've actually used to replace this space. I almost never use this space. You may discard any card from your hand for every two you discard gain one resource. You're probably failing pretty hard <laughs> if you're using this space, especially in solo. Multiplayer, you might need it because there's a lot of Stuff going on, but in solo, we're just going to go ahead and replace that space with the market from the Belfair expansion. Got my Spire Crest board up here. Here are the walkers, and we're going to get to those walkers uh, when I get to the prepare for season, which will happen pretty quickly in winter. I don't have a lot of actions available to me. Here are my two workers. I'm going to get this uh, rabbit, or not a rabbit, rat, <laughs> mouse, something. Um, going to get them at the preparation for summer. I will not get this character in the spring, and these two will come uh, during the fall. The bot has placed on this forest tile and this card, so I cannot, I don't have access to either of those two things, and more bots will flood the board. They get to keep all their other pieces, and they're eventually gonna be flooding all over and getting in my way. All right, so the first thing that I do is I uncover the winter effect. Deep freeze, forest locations may not be visited. <laughs> They're all bad. <laughs> There's no real good ones, but at least this one's easy to remember. Just don't go to the forest during the entirety of winter. I think I can handle that. And the two tiles that I have over here, they're both worth the same amount of points. It just depends on whether I want to discard resin at the end of the game or berries. Not sure what I'm going to do quite yet. I'm going to check out what my hand tells me and go from there. The other thing that I want to specify at the beginning of the game are the, are the special events. So this one is five common constructions will get me five points if I put my guy there. Also four unique critters. So uh, that's from the Belfair expansion. I like the simplicity of them, easy to remember. This is from the basic expansion. So we have the lookout and the minor mall will get me a thing. And then the chip sweep and the clock tower will get me a thing. I think I could start working on at least one of those right away. All right, so for my first proper play, I'm actually going to go to the market from the Belfair expansion. Uh, another thing, the player power from the Belfair expansion says, after you visit a basic or a forest location, you may gain one resource. You're going to want to use this a lot uh, because I, I get one less worker, so that's three less um, actions that I get throughout the course of the game, so I want to be able to make up for that. But I can't do that. It's basically the one space that's available to me that I cannot do that. But there's some good stuff here, too. So I'm gonna to go to the market and I'm actually gonna get stone. So when I come back, you'll see one stone and then I'm going to draw three cards. Let's see what I get, the king, yeah. Uh, lots of points, the lookout and the crane. Crane is good for playing constructions. So not, not all of which are not terrible. Uh, I have my max hand size of eight cards already. Could have taken anything else, but I wanted the stone because I see some cards in the meadow that I wanna play. All right, let's zoom back to the board for the second action. I really wanted to go here, but the weather prevents me from going here. Apparently, there's a massive snowstorm. Can't go here <laughs> to any forest location, but that's okay. So we are going to go here. We're going to get two resin. There we go. And because of my mouse power, which I showed you, I get one stone from visiting. All right, so let's start to build my city with the, my one res, my two resin and two stone. Let's spend one of each on a general store. General store says gain one berry. If you have a farm in your city, gain an additional berry. It is a production, so I get it, the benefit of it right away. Here we go. That is the name of the game in Everdell. Spend, and then make sure you're in a position to get as soon as you spend. So whenever you play a card into your area, you roll the die and, you, and the bot takes one of these four cards. Uh, played fool, so hopefully it takes one of those two. <laughs> Three, nope. It takes a bard. Just got to make sure to keep track of what it's taking. And I'm just going to put it in a pile off on the side. Okay. I'll mine, gain one stone. Want to make sure I keep track of that thing. Okay, the second card that I'm going to play, get my uh, two resin, or my one resin and one stone out of here. I played uh, everything that I got. 
going to be a resin refinery, which will give me one resin. A couple of reasons why this once I said, like I mentioned about the production thing, uh, which will fire off a couple of times too. Uh, it has those free creatures that come along with it. Uh, one of which is the chip sweep, which is a special card. So I, I, that's why I wanted to kind of get the resonant refinery, get that chip sweep when I see them and get make myself closer to that special card. And the shopkeeper just has to be a really awesome card. So I think I made out pretty good getting those two cards in the winter phase. Let's go ahead and replace that card. Ruins, wow, lots of fodder for the, uh, <laughs> for the bot to get, which is perfectly fine for them. Uh, gonna roll a seven and it does get those ruins. It already is close to having the three um, travel icons that it needs, which is the bad part, but at least it isn't worth too much. So there we go. I get to replace that. Another mine. I'll probably go ahead and snap one of those up. All right, looks like we are ready to prepare for spring. So the two travelers walk this way and this little bugger just follows me. <laughs> Nothing I can do about that. Uh, this one will get discarded. Just put that and I'll uncover that in a second. I get to choose which one of these I follow. I happen to get two buildings that both generate the berries and the resin. I'll choose the berries. I guess I'm kind of banking a little bit, sorry about that, that I won't play a very heavy uh, person game, uh, the critter game. So I'll have some berries to leave off and I'll give that to the bot. Okay, so now I get to uncover cards from this deck. This one will go into the first slot. Ooh, big critter, Stubble Hoof. The start of Prepare for Season, you might choose to leave Stubble Hoof where he is, activate that spacing in and get some extra stuff. Not bad, not bad at all. For those curious, this is what the meeple for Stubble Hoof looks like with the little saddle so you could place your worker on there. I mean, this game just does not relent with the adorbs factor. <laughs> so that may just be the thing that I pick. We'll see what else I get. Number two, the map seller. I can go here and draw from the meadow and our discard pile. Okay, some little extra card economy right there. Or the trial guide, when played, place up the three critters beneath this card. I may play a card from beneath this trail guard for minus two berries. Yeah. <laughs> As, as tough as that one is to resist, I'm going to have to go with the trail guide for a couple of reasons. My hand size is full, and I would like to kind of get rid of a couple of cards. So I am going to get rid of the lookout and the inn, and we are just going to discard those. That pays for the cost of the uh, thing over here. By taking the second card, uh, I give the solo bot only one point. So when you see the solo bot again, it'll have one point next to him. And finally, this card is just glorious action economy, and I happen to have three critters in my hand. I am going to put the king, the postal pigeon, and the judge, all excellent cards, under this trail guide, and I'll be able to play them for a massive berry discount at my leisure. Excellent. All right, so I'm ready to begin the second round proper, the spring season. I think I'm going to begin by getting this done right away, at least one of them. This is the judge. When you play a critter or construction, maybe replace one uh, resource, kind of cycling the resources through, which I think will combo very well. With the mouse, I anticipate being able to hollow out one of my resources so that when I go to a space, I can you know, uh, swap some things around, at least uh, uh, do the best that I can with it anyway. So I'm gonna play this. It's normally worth three, but the uh, the trail guide is really powerful, is able to let me play it for one. So then I could spend my one over there. Look at these things rolling all over the place. That of course means that the bot is going to reprise. A seven, no, it's taking away a mine. Good thing I have two of them. Uh, so I just have to remember that it has collected a green one. The thing that I'm worried about are the um, traveler ones. So this icon, it already has two. It's probably gonna get a third and deny me that special event, what am I gonna do? Ooh, a farm. I like the farm. I got a husband and a wife right there. Very vulnerable to uh, the board taking them away from me, but I may just uh, decide to alter my strat just a little bit to try to get that farm and everything else going. 
So normally I would just go to the basic space. My forest spaces aren't optimized for the wood that I need to build the farm. Uh, so, and the basic spaces are would they result in one less because of this weather event. Uh, to remind us, it says when you visit a basic location, get one less thing. Get out of here. I don't want that. <laughs> so I'm actually going to go to the market again, and I'm going to get the wood from here. I won't get to use my cool power for the mouse. However, I've loaded up these two uh, constructions to be able to kind of give me a little bit of that uh, later. And I get to draw three cards, or one, uh, sorry, I get to draw one card, which is a farm. <laughs> which actually, that's not terrible because just, um, yeah, it's not terrible, it's fine. Uh, and I would be able to get three wood. All right, here's my three wood, getting the angle a little bit wider so you see what I'm doing. I am taking the farm, I'm playing it from this area, and I'm going to put it in here. Um, so I can pay two and a resin that will go back. When I play the farm, I get to acquire a berry because of its production. The judge would allow me to swap a resource, but I don't think I want to swap a resource right now. Actually, you know what? I kind of do. Let's go ahead and swap that berry that I just acquired for a uh, wood. Uh, order of operations, I'm not exactly sure if I could do that, but <laughs> uh, sure, <laughs> I'm just going to go with it. I don't know what the order of operations is, uh, to be honest with you, whether this happens after this, but I'm just going to say that uh, it's all kind of one action, so I'm going to swap that berry for a wood. All right, so we're back at the board. Here's the university. We are going to hope and pray that he does not roll a five or a six, the husband or the wife. Seven, look at that. Uh, just got the university as a paw. Just keeping track of that. Gonna get another card, which is the crane. All right, my second and final worker for the turn. I'm actually going to this sweet spot over here. I'm gonna get three resin. And because I have the mouse power, I'm also going to get a stone. I have a feeling the stone's gonna come in handy in a bit. All right, so time to get some card play going now that my workers are done for the spring. Remember, this is my hand, and I set myself up to get another farm. Lots of production available, so it gives me some options in terms of getting special events. And uh, the husband and the wife would both be free, which I would really like if I could pull that off. So I'm going to spend the resin that I got into wood. I can, with the judge, trade more resources. I think I'm going to trade a resin for a berry, just to kind of have that around. And I also get a berry, in case I need that later. All right, back at the board, uh, the bot has his reprisal. A four. Ooh, finally got the fool. Okay, at the end of the round, because it has this third thing, it's going to grab the cartographer's expedition. I'm not sure if that's the right icon for it, but why not? <laughs> So it's going to get one of those things at least. Twig barge, not bad. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wife. Okay, the wife I get for free because I have a farm. I'm going to cover that up and I'm going to place the wife here for free. Do not have to pay the cost of the berry. And place that. Another farm. Who shuffled this deck? <laughs> All right, now I only don't want it to roll a six. That's a one. Finally gets rid of that historian, which I could never have gotten anyway. Uh, just keep in mind that it's, it's getting a blue. And it is getting, what is happening? <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> that was completely random, but that's a farm that I cannot access, so who really cares? The next thing that happens is I'm going to try to acquire the, well, not try, because it did not acquire the husband from the meadow, I get to acquire the husband. The husband's special power, well, a couple of things happen. First of all, uh, I use the power of the second farm that I have to get the husband for free as well. The wife is worth more points, or one more point if it has the husband around, and also gain one if paired with the wife and you if at least have one farm in your city. I certainly have both of those things and I get one more 
Barry. So I managed to pull off getting my husband and my wife together without having things uh, fall completely apart, but it does get one more of these going. The mine, I was, I actually was gonna go for the mine, at least one mine, uh, but I think I did well to get the husband and the wife. So that's go ahead and acquire that. Get some ruins over here. All right, pretty significant retcon incoming. It has been a little bit of a while since I played everything else that I forgot. But I kind of am going to rewind some things and show you what happened. The offending card is here. Where did he go? The Fool. So when the, the bot acquires a Fool, it actually plays it into my city. So I now have a wasted space. I have seven spaces now, one of which is filled with the Fool. So that's fine. The next thing I'm going to do now that I remembered doing that is those three berries that I have, I'm actually going to play them and I'm going to play the fool into the bot city. So what that happens is I discard this fool and I look in the bot city and I figure out if I can get rid of one of these cards. They're all worth the same, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm kind of just breaking uh, my, my, my majorities over here. So I think I'm gonna let him have this. He can't get everything. So I think I want to get rid of this because I already have one of these. I might be able to get uh, two more before it does. So bye-bye. So not the best or not the my favorite use of berries, but the, knowing that the fool is such an offensive card, we are just going to take that out of the bot's hands. <laughs> so uh, I hope that retcon made sense. I'll have noted it when the mistake happened and now I'm back in play. I have a monastery now. Uh, here we go. So uh, eventually I'm going to want to try to get a, I think it's a, a dungeon. <laughs> I think that puts away the fool. Uh, we'll see if I can get a dungeon at some point. So here's my city. <laughs> I'm actually almost filled up. Uh, there's that fool over there that I had played. And I'm going to play another card uh, before the end of spring. I'm going to play the Postal Pigeon off of the... Uh, trail guide over here which means I could play it for two less berries it cost two so it's gonna be free for me so I'm gonna play that pigeon and then I'm going to reveal two cards from the deck I could play one up to uh, three for free the husband I already have uh, yeah that would be cool uh, but I already have one the inn play a critter construction from uh, from the metal for three fewer that one could come in handy, and it's uh, one of these guys anyway, so let's do that. Go on to play the inn for free and discard the husband. And I'm going to roll for the bot. The bot rolls a seven, gets rid of that crane. Good thing I got rid of the, the bat before, so it, it won't beat me to that one if I decide to get it. The replacement is the ever tree. What? <laughs> Ooh, I might want to go for that one. And it would get any any wow what a powerful card i think i'm ready to declare end of round let's make it happen so then this bunny or both of them because this one's a tag along and i don't like him but i'm stuck with him anyway goes here first thing that happens is i get to choose one of these two things i need to be very careful about my hand management if i pick this one but i think i don't want to let the bot get four points so that's what's going to happen so i'm going to put that in my row and the bot is going to get this two pointer all right, so uh, time to unleash a traveler's deck, and it's this one. First card, Ancient Orchard, place a worker, gain five berries. I'm about to get a lot of berries from production. At least I can get a lot of berries from production, so doubt I'm gonna be using that too much. Ruins Aspire, gain three resources of any mix. Very good for flexibility, but I have the mouse card, so I don't think that I'm gonna be taking advantage of it too much. Come on, give me a good one. Yeah, critter. Uh, there's a lot of critters in there, so I had a good chance of that. The Corleander may achieve any event for half the required cost. Any event? Oh, man. I'm definitely going to get that one. I am going to discard from my hand this crane in the cemetery. Bye-bye. And I'm going to give the bot one point. So it has two points total from the Traveler's shenanigans. All right, so we are at a new round, the summer round. So I have already got rid of the heavy rain. Heavy rain is out, and now we are going to summer. Drought, do not activate production when played. I have plenty of production, <laughs> so I don't anticipate getting too much uh, bothered by that. So avoided, but could have been a pretty nasty card. All right, and here are my travelers. Here are the two 
um, tra- uh, whatever these cards are called. Uh, so this one is six points. Let me show you. For five berries, this one is uh, two points for two cards discarded. I'm probably going to go for that five berry one because my city is very berry productive. Berry, berry productive. <laughs> I didn't even mean that. <laughs> so sorry about that. That was a terrible pun. All right, so I'm actually going to take an approach to this uh, r- the round that I usually don't because I happen to have a lot of prereqs and the coriander helps me out. If you wanted to know what that coriander looks like, oh my god, he's so cute. The best ever. Check this out. So I'm going to take this worker, put him there. Normally, I would need four unique critters to claim this, but I, with the coriander, I only need two. And I have two unique quitters, the wife and the judge. So yoink, here we go. Thank you very, very much, Coriander. (laughs) All right, the second thing I'm going to do is I am going to claim this one as well. Five common constructions, bed and breakfast guild. Uh, So I get another five points from this. So these two will go away. I have five common constructions, the general store, the resin refinery, two farms, and an inn. All right, so as you can see, the new goals are a lot easier to achieve than the old goals. So uh, I'm happy to kind of feature that for you in this playthrough. And the last thing we're going to do in the summertime is I have four uh, constructions over here. So I get to claim the Harvest Festival. We are just cleaning out and getting points, claiming them before the bot claims them. So here we go. I got three for my personal city. (laughs) <laughs> not getting a lot of construction done, but at least I'm sweeping the board of potential points that the bot can get. So that is the end of the round. <laughs> that was fast. Bot didn't do anything. I didn't construct anything, get any resources, but I did claim a lot of points. So uh, pretty happy with that. Let's see if I can end it off on a good resource management and all the trading that makes this game fun. Let's see. So first of all, they roll my two travelers walk around and they will next time you see them they will appear on their personal boards i claim these or one of them and i think i'm going to do it i'm going to claim the berry just in case okay and then the the bot will get two points for that hopefully i can complete that leg of the journey the next thing that happens right north of the city is i deal out the three travelers cards I didn't get any resources, I didn't draw any cards, so (laughs) I'm gonna have a hard time paying for that. Hopefully this isn't that attractive. Uh, Let's see, all right. So, Cave of Dancing Lights, I play it immediately, I reveal four cards from the deck, get some resources, that sounds pretty good. And I draw those cards. I don't have any cards in my hand, so that might be a strong possibility. So that's good, and that'll be free. Okay, Serpent's Pass, play at the beginning of your expedition, ooh. Pay six resources, get seven points. Ooh, that's tough. Well, see how resourcey I can make my game. We'll see what happens. And Cloud Song, name any construction, search the deck, and put it in your hand. Wow, that's a really, really strong contender. Uh, however, because of how that last round played out, I just don't feel confident I can get enough resources to pay for everything. So let's just gain resources. That's free. Bot's going to get three points, which I don't like, but we are going to reveal and get some stuff. All right, looks like I got a couple of things. Got an innkeeper, post office, another innkeeper and a cemetery. Uh, the important part is I got two footprints and two scrolls, which according to the key is two resin and two stone. I will take it and I draw them into my hand. That is fine, played, uh, now I can get rid of it and get rid of these. I unfortunately have to give the bot three points, but I think that's a fair trade. All right, so new round, get rid of the summer event. Let's see what the fall event brings. Every card in the meadow costs what additional resource to play. Uh, Don't love that, but. Just something to keep in mind and track throughout the turn. All right, so I realized midway, and I'll have a note in the video, that I played the bot a little bit wrong. Uh, The first round, the bot should not have started on the card. It should have started on this forest space, and I should have been moving along here to block the space. I don't think that cost me at all, (laughs) so I'm not even going to worry about it. That's fine. So now I've corrected everything. The bot that goes in circles around here is over here for the fall. 
so it's going to block this space, which I like, but uh, that's what that's the that's the nature of the bot. It's going to do things that that you don't like. This bot over here would have gone to the berry space and blocked it, but instead it's the last round. It's going to block the 3.1. I'm playing the year one easier mode solo just because I don't like to do a lot of thinking when I do a playthrough. Obviously, because I'm getting a couple things wrong, but hopefully it's good enough for you guys. So, and gals. So that's going to block over here. And then these four metal cards are blocked, which is okay because the last card affects what I can play out of the meadow. And what I can play out of the meadow is very, very constrained. So I don't think that it's that big a deal. The one card I would want is the Evertree. We'll see if I can actually get the resources to play it. It is autumn, so it is now production. So I get one, two berries from the general store because I have a farm, a resin, a third berry, a fourth berry, and a fifth berry because of the husband, five berries, which I really need, <laughs> and one resin. Let's make it happen. All right, so right away, I'm gonna take advantage of my coriander again. What, are, what sound does the coriander make? I love this game. <laughs> I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna claim this cartographer's expedition that the bot that the bot almost claimed, but I got the coriander. It goes it takes the requirement down from three to two, and it lets me claim this thing. Oh baby, we are taking stuff away from the bot. Oh yeah, and I did forget to mention that I got my full complement of workers, so I have five. I would have six, except I have playing with the player power. I don't know if it was benefited me in the long term because I'm not really going. I took so many spots over here, but you know, whatever. I play with the player power. <laughs> so I got my five to place. Now, four. All right, let's get some card play going. Uh, from my hand, I get to put the innkeeper. I have the inn. Look at that. Inn, innkeeper. The game is making it simple for me to use the innkeeper, uh, the inn power to get the innkeeper for free. Y'all know the drill. Let's see what the bot does in response. A one gets a farm. I don't care at all. <laughs> it's already uh, claimed that uh, I've already claimed that. So that is about as good as I could have rolled. The school comes out, but who cares? I cannot get the school. All right. So here is what I was super duper excited about. So the innkeeper says when you play a critter, you may discard the innkeeper from your city to decrease, decrease the cost by three. Get out of here. Uh, innkeeper. I also have the last of my trail my trail guide. I can play a card from under here for minus two. So now I have a five berry discount on the critter that is under here. Look who I have stored away, the king, and look how many basic events and special events I was able to play. Booyah! Got a berry. That berry is going to get uh, put back. And I also have the judge. Whenever you play a critter or construction, I get to take what is a useless, well, not useless, but a, a substandard thing I don't want. Resin, another berry, excellent. Once again, I have played card eight. A monastery, and eh, the monastery might've been good. It's another one of those, I have to keep an eye on that. And let's see what I get. Architect. Architect, unique critter. One point for each one of my unused things. Too bad I have no unused things. <laughs> nice try, Architect. All right, let us get moving with some worker placement. <laughs> let's place a worker over here. Uh, for that space, I can activate two cards in my productive in my city. Uh, I am going to get two berries uh, from the general store, and I'm going to get a resin from the resin refinery. My mouse power kicks in, I get to take a resource that I don't have, which will be wood. All right, so now I get to play a card out of my hand. My hand of four cards that I got from the last turn. I'm gonna play this post office for one wood and two resin. No discounts or anything, but I like the post office. That's very good. I'm going to pay one wood and the two resin that I got. Put those back. Okay. And when I play a construction or uh, because of the judge, I can replace one with another one. Um, I am going to place one of my bountiful berries with a stone right there. So I'm 
me just go ahead and push the resources in the frame. I now have seven berries, one wood, and two stone. The bot goes and plays. It is going to take a school. I don't like that it's getting purple cards. It's worth a little bit more to it, but there's nothing I can do about that. Fairgrounds, draw two cards. Well, that's too bad. Couldn't have gotten it anyway. For my next placement of a worker, I'm actually going to go to a common space. There is nothing stopping me from going to a common space. I get to take three wood. Here we go. And I also get to take a resource that I do not have, which the only one I don't have is a resin. All right, so I'm zoomed in on my city and I'm very excited about this move. I'm gonna put my player at the inn. The inn I could use for free. This open means, if you could see that right there, means that another player would have to play uh, pay um, a money or point in order to be able to use this, but I can use it on my own. Perfectly fine. Play a critter or construction from the meadow for three fewer resources. Okay, so I'm going to take a discount of two resin and one stone. So then we get rid of a resin, we get rid of two stone, and we get rid of four wood because of the extra cost from the autumn event, and I got myself and ever tree woo man that feels good <laughs> especially because i got the ever tree i got the king and i got the wife uh plenty of points uh staring at me let's go ahead and replace that card a ranger rangers are neat let's see what the bot acquires ah just ate the ranger too bad so sad i already claimed the traveler benefit benefit See if there's anything worth taking here. The Undertaker. Let's see if I can uh, get some use out of that. All right. So for my last worker of the game, it is actually going to go to the post office. So the post office, give an opponent two cards and discard any number of cards and drop to your hand size. I am, uh, instead of uh, discarding, I am going, instead of giving it to the bot, I, I discard them. That's what the rules say. And I discard the rest of my hand and I draw up to eight. Fabulous. Look at that. The post office, just it just um, ensured that I'm able to complete the journey, which is completely fabulous. That's why I built it. All right, so got some cards. Farm, who cares? Wife, eh, whatever, judge, I already have you. Farm, man, these are terrible cards. <laughs> Shopkeeper is good early. Chappelle, also good early. Queen, ooh. Um, let's see if I can get that queen going and the clock tower. So check out what I got. It is the ever tree, which is any. Uh, so any critter will be attracted to the ever tree. And you know who I'm going for. Queenie baby. Woo hoo. Four points. All right. Let's roll die. Got a one. Let's get out of here. Fairground, once again, don't really care at all. Just care that if it got a, a red, which doesn't exist, blue doesn't exist. Oh, well, bot, you put up no resistance this game. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the free thing from the post office to get a postal pigeon. Postal pigeon comes from the meadow. Reveal two, you may play one up to worth, that is worth three. I, you already got that before. So I'm going to reveal two. I'm going to play one of them for my 15th card. Historian or monk. I can add numbers. <laughs> uh, it's one point or zero points. I'm going to go for the one pointer. Excellent. Off screen, the bot just took the farm. Who cares? All right, so the grand finale. Uh, so... The bot goes, it just completes this journey. I gave it all the, the janky uh, journey thing. So we're just gonna take those off and get six points. I'm gonna give it credit for six points that will appear on the bot's board. First leg of the journey, I discard a card. Bye bye farm and a berry. Thank you very much for that. Second leg of the journey, discard five berries. Planned for that, that was awesome. Last leg of the journey, discard four cards. One, two, three, four, bye bye. I have completed the journey and I get 12 points from my journey. Excellent. So this is the final, final scoring over here. So I did not go to this space, which is a normal thing to do in a regular game of Everdell, but I think there's enough options 
with both Belfair and Spirecrest where this isn't as much of a necessity anymore. All right, so it gets three points for here, three points for each undone special here. Uh, these, point to call it, these point tokens it acquired along the way. So nine, 11 points from here, a bunch of points from here that add up to 45 total points for the bot. Just so you can see, it has a bunch of cards. It never achieved any of the basic event that did a real good job blocking him. Uh, gets two points per card and three points for every prosperity card, which is that. 45 points total. And then the final score for my city, I won't add them up in front of you, but I'll just tell you what the scoring elements are. Points from here, 14 points. Points for the basic events, points for the special events, points for everything here. And also adding up the Evertree, the King, and the Wife. Also gives me some bonuses. Adding up everything, I scored 61 points. Pretty sound thrashing of the bot. It was on the easier mode. I don't know if it would have made too much of a difference. I mean, actually it would have uh, in the hardest mode it denies you a worker in the last season. Don't love that. <laughs> so I might not have been able to pull off the post office part of that uh, little combo over there. But I absolutely love this game. Uh, it was a pleasure to do the playthrough. It was a pleasure to beat the bot. <laughs> Uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. So once again, the One Stop Co-op Shop is here for every one of your uh, cooperative and solo gaming needs. Go ahead and check out our YouTube, our Discord, our Patreon, and all that good stuff. So until the next time, this is Jason reminding you that we will see you at the next stop.